This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Okay, all right. So, before we jump into our first Strixhaven draft, I want to remind everyone that my content is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by clicking on the link in the description below on YouTube or the logo below on Twitch. You can get Strixhaven there, among other things, so check them out. Okay, so, what do we have in this pack? We have... Uh... Torn Sculptor, which isn't bad. It's not great either, but it's, it's, it's good. Um... This isn't the most exciting pack. Explosive Welcome is a card you want if you end up in Prismari. Inkling Summoning is one of the better of the, um, you know, uh, lessons. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to take the Torn Sculptor over Explosive Welcome. I mean, either side of it is good. Neither side is great, but both sides are good. Um, yeah, so we'll take... We'll take Torn Sculptor. <clears throat> Hi, why, Johnny? Why? Glad you've been watching since Ether Revolts a long time ago. Um, so, Karak Wrangler is quite strong. It's one of those creatures where, like, you know, it seems to almost always die when you play it. But if it doesn't, it, it, you're going to be in a lot in really good shape. And I think it's probably what we'll take here. Um, I don't think there's anything that great in this pack. I mean, you know, Arcane Subtraction is not bad. Learning is always good. But Karak Wrangler is quite good. So we'll take it. Right, snow day is not bad. We've got to cultivate here. Hard to say no to cultivate in this format since this format really does seem to be, especially if you're blue green or blue red, about uh, ramping and in in going on hard in the late game. Rip apart is quite good, but I think we'll probably take cultivate here um, over these other options. So, yeah, so far in this format. You know, the first five drafts, we drafted all five schools, but then the next two drafts have both been Prismari. So we drafted Prismari three times, uh, and all the other guilds or schools just once. I'd say this format is slow overall, though there is certainly a fun police deck in terms of the black-white deck that's around. Okay, I'm probably going to take Field Trip. It's great. You know, the learn ability is really good. It gives us something else to ramp into, uh, and, you know, that it's pretty nice to, to ramp with, rather. Um... Yeah, that's where we're going to go. Okay. Um, so, I like Pilgrim of the Ages. Uh, Quadrix Pledge Mage is probably just where we're going to go here. It's not a bad win condition. I've been reasonably happy with it. We wouldn't mind an Arcane Subtraction, but I kind of feel like we'll get one if we want one. Um, yeah. Pigment Storm's not bad either. We're not locked in necessarily on green yet. Um, on, well... Yeah, on blue, we're definitely not locked in. Um, but I think, you know, Pigment Storm's not premium. It's just it's just solid removal. Um, okay, Biomathematician's pretty good. This is an okay lesson, but not one good enough to take over something like Biomathematician. Uh, nice little blue-green card. Makes an extra body and all that. Um, so, I'll take it. And if you have more fractals, it does even more things. Um, so, you know, that could matter. All right, here, I'm kind of leaning towards taking the campus. Uh, Adventurous Impulse is okay. Same for the Invocation. You know, they're both very replaceable cards, though. Neither of them is that special. And fixing seems worth it in this pack overall. And, you know, even if we just end up straight up blue-green, having fixing is not too not too shabby. Okay, so here's a decent lesson. So that's another Arcane Subtraction. Um, maybe we don't want to take this one. <clears throat> yeah, the Scrylands are quite good in this format. I would agree. Yeah, it's either Expanded Anatomy or Arcane Subtraction. I don't... I mean, you know, we could kind of think about Witherbloom Campus, I suppose. Um, I'm going to go with the Subtraction at this point. Another card of Learn seems reasonable. Okay, this isn't a lesson we can play, unfortunately. It is interesting that it's still here, though, because I think it's one of the better ones. Uh, we're just going to take the Befuddler, though. Nothing special, but it is playable. Um, okay, good. We get an Arcane Subtraction anyway, which I'm happy about. Uh, you know, an additional one. So, 
we right now don't have any lessons. We wouldn't mind picking up uh, a little bit of fixing in terms of um, being able to play our flamethrower sonata. So we could consider the commons. The befuddler isn't great, so I think I will take fixing here. I don't love our twig commons, but it does it does fix. Okay, so none of this really works out for us in any way. Uh, I guess defend the campus is probably the best card of those four. <clears throat> and sure, novice to sector. And sure. Ooh, Dream Strix is quite good. Uh, what else we got? So Emergent Sequence we wouldn't mind. Right now, we're not actually ramping into anything, even though we have some ramp. So we do need to find some of that. Environmental Sciences is pretty good, too. Um, so that's worth keeping in mind. We'd probably take the Strix, though. And we do need to start taking Lessons, because right now we, uh, we don't have any. Um, and we do have... Um, what three cards with learn so and now four so we need to go hard on lessons from here on out but dream Strix is great it's just a nice aggressively costed creature that draws you a card when it dies and that's really good okay so i don't think containment breach is the most exciting lesson but i could definitely consider it i kind of feel like with another quandrix pledge mage here i may just go that route Introduction to Prophecy is not bad either. I know I said I was going to go hard on Lessons, but I think the Pledge Mage is good enough that I'd rather take it here than a, a Lesson. Okay, so here we are. Eh, there's a Needle Thorn Drake. Hmm. Introduction to Annihilation is a nice Lesson. Am I going to end up regretting not taking Lessons if I take this Needle Thorn Drake here? <laughs> Maybe, but we're going to do it anyway. I think Needlethorn Drake is good enough to, to grab. Okay, so uh, we wouldn't mind finding a way to splash Closing Statement, which we already have Archway Commons, so it's not impossible. And the green cards here are okay, but not great. Uh, I do like Hunt for Specimen a lot. Uh, specimens, we're just not there. I think we'll take Closing Statement here. Um, oh, never mind. We're going to take Elemental Summoning. We do need these lessons, and it's one we can play. As good as that card is, we'd have to pick up at least a little bit more fixing to make it work. So, yeah. Um, that's a late flunk, huh? Eureka Moment's pretty good. So, are we either looking at taking the flunk and trying to splash it, or taking Eureka Moment? Um... Flunk is definitely better. It's just a question of how likely it is we pick up the necessary fixing. Um, I think Flunk is good enough. I'm going to take it here. Yeah, I think. Okay, another Arcane Subtraction. Um, yeah, we probably just take Scurried Colony here. This does fix for us a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think Scarred Colony is fine. It's a two drop. One thing we're lacking right now is this, these kinds of cards. We don't have the most powerful of things to ramp into right now, which is, and that is the kind of thing that, you know, you don't ramp into it per se, but it does get better when you get a bunch of lands, which you should be good at doing. All right, we'll grab this Pest Summoning here. Gives us another nice lesson. And another one. Yeah. Okay, so here's a Witherbloom Campus. Helps us out with Flunk. Uh, Emergent Sequence is also quite good. You know, if I had more reasons to ramp, I think I would seriously consider taking the Sequence. And I might still, I guess. But it seems like making our mana a little bit better for Flunk is probably worth the pick. You know, this does fix for you, but the creature can die, you know, because it is a creature when it when it comes back. Uh, you know, getting another Witherbloom Campus is kind of brutal. Uh... Yeah, you know, makes me wish I'd taken the other card. But Archway Commons would also help us fix for the Flamethrower Sonata side. But we already have one, and, and they get bad in multiples. So I think we just take another Campus here. So now we have really good black fixing. We also managed to get two pretty good lessons here. Uh, which is good. Um, I don't really want any of these. <laughs> 
I will take excavated wall. Sure. So yeah, this deck right now, I'd say, is severely lacking in terms of having things to ramp into, which which isn't great. Um, we need to pick up some of that stuff, even if it's like the uh, six mana make a fractal with power and toughness equal to the number of lands you have. Like right now, we could use something like that for sure. <laughs> we could take another Torn Sculptor. <laughs> Uh, so something we could consider, if our mana gets to be good enough anyway, it would be splashing some of the big blue-red stuff, but this one's tricky to splash because of the double red. Probably just going to take another Biomathematician here. They do get better in multiples. Uh, you know, Torn Sculptor, I think, isn't bad, like we said earlier, but I do think Biomathematician is probably a little bit better um, than it is. Yeah. You know, and having the flamethrower Sonata side is really nice, but uh, we'll take another Biomathematician here. Okay, so something we could consider splashing is Elemental Masterpiece so that we have something to ramp into. And I don't hate that plan. Um, you know, we have a Cultivate, which helps us fix and ramp. We would need to run, like, one mountain to make it, to make it work, but, you know, maybe we'll pick up an Environmental Sciences, too. Um, but I think it seems like the right thing to do here. Uh, I do like Eureka Moment, but our, like I said, our deck is lacking enough and things to ramp into that, you know, I think we need to start grabbing things we can splash, like the Masterpiece here. Okay, here's another Needlethorn Drake. Uh, so, Vortex Runner, Leyline Invocation, those are both decent things. Memory Lapse, not too bad either, uh, actually. Um... So Invocation does give us something else to ramp into, but I kind of think Vortex Runner is better in that sense. I think it's, you know, it's you don't ramp into it, but it gets better when you have enough lands. Um, so I think I'll take the Vortex Runner over Leyline Invocation here. Okay, so here's another lesson. Uh, we're about to pick up another card with Learn, because I think we're going to take Divide by Zero here. Yeah, that's where we're going to go. So we do need more lessons for sure still, because we're still sitting at two. So basically any lesson we see that we can manage to cast, especially if it's the fixing one, that one we really want, uh, we're probably just going to grab it. So here's another pest summoning. I think we'll grab that over containment breach. Hmm. Will I though? I mean, there are a few problem artifacts and enchantments, and just having this as an option uh, is pretty nice. Um... Even though there aren't a ton of artifacts and enchantments in this set, we already do have one pest summoning. I think I'll grab the Breach here. Uh, you know, the Groff and the Invocation are both fine, but we're going to grab Breach. And it's not going to go there. It's going to go here. Okay, so Zephyr Boots is pretty good. Um, here's some fixing, though. I think we're going to take the fixing for our Masterpiece here over Zephyr Boots. As much as I like the Boots... Um, Okay, we'll grab this Introduction to Annihilation here. Amplomancer, you know, it's another thing we don't really ramp into in a technical sense, but it does have an activated ability that if you have a bunch of lands, it gets to be pretty good. So, so I think we're doing well enough on fixing to play uh, Flunk and Elemental Masterpiece, so that's good. I think we take another Vortex Runner. Golden Ratio just seems too inconsistent. Do I want another Archway Commons? I mean, I think it's what I'm going to take here because I'm not playing Square Up, and there is a chance we want to, but right now I'm not really planning on it. Yeah, so, you know, most of my decks in this format, I've, most of them have felt pretty good, uh, even the ones that haven't done great. I guess we had the one Prismari deck that wasn't great too, but, but this one I'm not super confident about. I mean, I don't think it's bad, but we don't have a lot of removal. Uh, and we didn't do a great job of finding things to ramp into. Now, we do have a lot of learn, which can just carry a de carry you sometimes. Um, and, you know, we have some powerful cards, but this isn't really the way you want to draw it up with blue-green most of the time. But I can live, you know, I'm fine with it. So, more likely to play the Adept um, than 
the other things here. So we ended up with one, two, three, four. Yeah, we ended up with five lessons, which is good. That's probably about what we wanted. If you picked up another random one, I wouldn't hate it, but it doesn't look like we're going to. Yeah, I mean, our main, our deck's main thing is definitely learn. We're kind of a, you know, with Karak Wrangler, we're kind of a spells deck too. Yeah, it's almost like we're more aggressive than anything else. Ooh. I think we'll take the Groff and we'll probably actually play it. Um, you know, we don't have a million pests, but we have enough that I think playing it makes some sense. Um, and, you know, if we wait, if we play it on turn five, it's not a disaster. So I think it's, I think it's fine, especially to get that late. Guiding Voice probably sh should not still be here. So, yeah. Okay. So we will need to put in one more card. Uh, ugh. <laughs> it has to be a not very good one because um, we just don't have we took enough fixing and lessons in that draft taking fixing and lessons does drastically reduce how playable your um, uh, the cards that don't make the cut are so we're not running any mountain well I guess we'll probably run one because of cultivate so we'll run one mountain um and one swamp is right too. Yeah. So we're probably going to have to put in either consider putting in one of these decent uh, lessons or resculpt. I mean, that's basically what we're looking at. <laughs> or another land, you know, um, or excavated wall. I mean, we don't have great stuff to 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 put in, but uh, yeah. So. I guess we probably want green more than blue, or most of our fixing is green. Of course, we do have a bunch of... We have eight. Yeah, no, we're good. That's good. You can usually pick... Yeah, two of the three, or diamond. Yeah, I would say that's right. Yeah. I think we may just play Resculpt, which I don't love. But, you know, it's not a complete disaster uh i think keeping the lessons in our sideboard makes all of our learn cards which we have like five or six of enough better that i'm just going to put in the resculpt yeah Ugh. okay all right i think i can live with this Okay. All right, pretty good hand overall. We're probably gonna play the commons this next turn, but we're gonna, you know, if if I draw an island, for example, I probably play the Drake. Um, yeah. Okay, we did not draw an island, so I think we'll just play our commons here. Yeah. Well, you know, anytime your opponent doesn't actually get to do a thing with that, it feels pretty good. Um, let's play Quandrix Campus here. And yeah, I think we'll just play our Needlethorn Drake. We could get cute with some other stuff, but... I think just playing the Drake is fine. Yeah, uh, I think we're okay with that trade. Okay, so that guy can get crazy out of hand if you're not careful. 
Um, so I may just flunk it. I could also use divide by zero instead. Divide by zero does let me learn and yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's divide by zero here. Yeah, we'll go with divide by zero. So... I kind of feel like grabbing removal, but we do have flunk already. Um, so let's just grab... Let's just grab elemental summoning. Okay, so I guess this time we're going to flunk. Hmm. I mean, we can sort of just let them have their treasure and kill stuff, you know, with flunk or, or by wishing for other removal spell. I don't think that seems terrible. I may just play Bayou Groff here for five. It is, after all better, basically. Although, after we make pests, it would... Yeah, okay. I think because of the pest situation, um, the Biograph is fine to chill here. Okay, so... Good chance they have the learn trick. I think I'm just gonna take two. Especially because, like, if we have mana untapped, we can blow that trick out pretty hard. attack here. I think they may have removal. Okay, well they don't have removal, but they do blink that effect, more or less. Um, then I think I play Dream Strix and leave mana up for other stuff. I guess I could, could just play another big creature, though. Maybe that's just better. Oh, crap. <laughs> Mascot Exhibition. We could have used one of those. That would have really tied our deck together. Uh, yeah, that's that's not good. There's not really anything we can do about it. Other than, like, try to beat it. Um, I think if that's their play next turn, I'd probably just play the Groff for five here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this card feels enough like a companion, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, free. I mean, they all kind of are, but this one's so powerful that uh, it kind of blows all the other lessons out of the water in the sense that it's, like, very... It has a very, very real effect. Okay, so I think I'm going to attack with both of these. They may decide to just take it and swing back. I think that's probably ideal for us, and that is what they decide to do. Because we have enough things that we can do with the cards in our hand that... 
Um, yeah, between Arcane Subtract Subtraction and Burag, Befuddler, and Flunk, we can cast two of those. So, yeah. I could just think about flunking the artist, Stormkill artist, now. That might not be a bad plan. Eh. We'll hold off. Plan on using things in our hand to try to disrupt what's going on. Morning, Relevin. Mascot Exhibition. Okay. So... Do I just want bodies, or do I want a removal spell? Right now, as wide as they are, I almost feel like the bodies are better. Yeah, we're going to get another thing with, with our subtraction anyway, so we'll get past summoning here. Does have a mana value of two. Yeah. As if things weren't already bad enough. <laughs> okay. So we are going to kill this Storm Kiln artist here. We're going to play our Befuddler. Uh, I guess we'll shrink this down. And we're going to play Arcane. Hmm. Yeah, then we're going to play Arcane Subtraction on this. And grab... Probably removal now. I don't know, bodies still seem kind of good to me. Yeah. Then we'll block there, and we take four. Hmm... We don't have any spells. Ooh, the summoning's not bad. Interesting. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I think we play Torrent Sculptor and Exile the Summoning, and then play also play Pest Summoning. It doesn't seem bad. I may even attack here. I think I will. We can also play the removal side, but I don't think we need to just... I mean, I think I'd rather just get the creature. This is going to be a 4-4 with Ward, which which isn't amazing, but um, it definitely works for me right now. Actually, it's a 5-5. Math. Um, and then, yeah, we'll play Pest Summoning. <clears throat> so... We're putting up an okay fight. Our opponent does have a million mana and still has three cards in their hand. Right, I like to see that. I like to see that you're just attacking with one thing. That Befuddler turn was pretty sweet, honestly, overall. the What we did in combat worked out quite well. Morning, Blue Rays. If I were them, I don't know. They are at seven. I probably wouldn't be crazy aggressive either. Hmm. 
so good. <laughs> Another one of those. We're only at seven lands right now. It's unfortunate. Um... So I think I'm going to attack with my elemental token here. See what happens there. Elementals trade. Not too surprising of an outcome. So play... Pest summoning. And then our colony. We're playing a Quandrix deck in limited uh, blue rays. Yeah, we still have Flunk already to go if that's what we need. And it may be. Yeah, that's annoying. I could Flunk my own Skurrid Colony. <laughs> just so that I, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I'm at seven. If I were them... I guess it has reach. Never mind. They do kind of have to get rid of it. Okay, so we're going to flunk whatever they try to put these counters on. Yeah, so... See you later. Well, we have a very real chance, I think, of beating the uh, Mastery, which is kind of crazy, I think. Um, especially now that we do a Vortex Runner. We do need one more land to start pressuring them with the Vortex Runner, but... I could attack with everything here. That wouldn't have been the worst. Eh... It probably would have been, actually. <laughs> Wouldn't have been great. Um, we're not at a point, really, where we can scry in our upkeep. But we're going to be there soon. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, we got four pests. So basically now if we draw land we win, so I probably am going to try to scry on my upkeep next turn. Thank you for the follow, Ganymede Rising. They have way too many cards in their hand for me to think an Alpha Strike is the right call. Um... <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> Would have been good to draw that, but now I don't really want to. There we go. Still not really brave enough to get in to attack with everything here. Things are too sketchy here. Yeah. There's a chance I could kill them if I attack with everything, but I'm at 7 and I can't really afford to do that. I could attack with my Sculptor too, I guess. And then just leave back all the pests. I think that seems reasonable. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That means I have to block the Sculptor now. Well, I'm gonna be... We managed to beat the exhibition, which I didn't think we'd be able to do, but... Our opponent drew kind of poorly, and we had, you know, card advantage just as a result of all our learning, as often is the case. Uh, so...
No green, huh? And we don't have the fixing trick. That said, I think this is probably a keep on the draw. Oof. This card is almost like we're mulliganing anyway, so maybe I should have... Yeah, this isn't looking great. We could have really... The, you know, last weekend when I was streaming, it was so easy to get copies of the trick that um, fixes. But now that the secret is out and people are taking it really high. Ah. <laughs> yeah, we're in some trouble here, I'd say. Okay, that's a pretty good draw right here. Still lets us leave up our subtraction to at least prevent some damage. Well, that's gross. I think we may be too far behind to come back. We're working on being too far behind to come back anyway. So that's going to do three damage to me when it attacks. Something like that, yeah. Life drain effect. Oh, my God. I just clicked while the, uh, that, was, that wasn't good. We don't want containment breach. I mean, it probably doesn't matter. But that isn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Okay. So I think our plan here is... Biomathematician and leave up Resculpt. I think that's our best bet here. Because <sighs> Resculpt can actually help us out here significantly. You know, it's super risky, and if our opponent has any way to interact, it's not going to help. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to run us over here. I probably want to kill Dina. I think that's where we want to go most of all here. With our resculpt. Um, and I can also block the ink caster with my mathematician. Yeah, that doesn't seem bad. So let's re-sculpt on this. See if they have a way to interact. Oh, that isn't even the card I thought it was. <laughs> I was thinking that was a different card. I think I was thinking it was square up. All right, so we're going to block. It would have worked there still. Uh, but not, not that well. <laughs> yeah, we're not coming back. They just ran us over. Um, not the kind of start an opponent can have where you don't, uh, yeah, they can just kill us now, actually. Yep. Yeah. So because of our mana situation, there wasn't really... I guess we could have grabbed the Elemental Mask, the Elemental Token Maker, but it would have been too slow. We were kind of dead no matter what we did after our slow start. So, not too surprising. Yeah, Witherbloom can be pretty legitimately aggressive. Not as frequently as Silver Quill, but it's a, it can be legit like that, like we just saw. That's for sure.
All right, I do think we can keep this. It has... Hmm. Can we, though? We need one blue mana. I mean, all we can cast in this hand... Well, we can cast the Amplomancer in the Flunk, so I'd probably do it. I'm probably going to keep it. Thank you for the follow. The great mistake. See if this is another keep we regret. Nope. Because we drew what we needed to. Um, I think I'm actually going to play the Amplomancer early here. Yeah. Okay. Well. Then we just go ahead and play Dream Strix, I think. Um, you know, if they don't kill it, it's going to start hitting them hard in the air. If they do kill it, we get a lesson, so I'm not too broken up about it. So, the good news is they don't get to learn because our creature died uh, in response to that. Um, I would rather just have Pest Summoning, especially with Groff around. I think that seems pretty good. Yeah. So, we do still get a two-for-one out of the deal. That part was good. Um, okay. I'm trying to decide what I'd rather do here. I think I'm going to go with the Vortex Runner. They haven't done anything yet, which is surprising. Um, <laughs> makes me scared of what the cards in their hand are. I wonder if maybe they're Silver Quill and they were waiting for Black Mana the whole time. And they're splashing red for something. Although, enthusiastic study kind of makes that less likely, I think. So I wouldn't mind, like, Pest Summoning Bayou Groff as a turn this next turn. Hopefully they don't cast that dragon. <laughs> they can't yet, is the good news. It costs seven, so... Ugh... So, we're going to need to learn and blow that thing up before it starts doing silly things. The good news is, we have that card in our sideboard that will let us blow it up. Um, okay. The question is whether I want to arcane subtraction one of my own creatures just to make sure... I have the ability to blow up the finale. And I might. Um, the thing I don't love about that is I can't also add to the board this turn, but Dramatic Finale is strong enough that maybe... Maybe I should just do it. Um, I do know I'm attacking. So, I think I'm going to play Pest Summoning here, and then my plan next turn... Hmm... See, the problem is, if I don't draw a fifth land, I won't be able to Arcane Subtraction and blow this up. But as long as I don't kill one of their creatures, this won't have an immediate effect. So I think I can live with that. Yeah, let's play Pest Summoning. So our fail case for our next turn, if we don't draw a fifth land, will be to uh, Bayou Groff and Needlethorn Drake. And that's not too bad. <sighs> Okay. Land here would be good. Not a land. That's okay, though. Um, yeah, so let's attack with the 2-2 two, two and the 2-3. See what our opponent does about them. So that is going to give them a token. So that was probably stupid of me. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I was just saying I didn't really want to kill any of their creatures. And look what I did. Okay, so... Crap. I'm stupid. 
We're going to be able to blow it up next turn, but, uh, you know, we'll see if it's too late or not. I probably should have just not attacked here. That's probably what the right move was. Okay, so I think we save our Vortex Runner here. <clears throat> Arcane Subtraction, my own guy. I think it's probably still worth killing their guy as opposed to my own, because we still keep the guy on the board, but, you know, something we can think about. So grab this Containment Breach. Yeah, I definitely should have just done it last turn. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna play Bayou Groff here and sack one of these pests. Should be able to Containment Breach. The finale this next turn. Unless they, uh, duress us or something here. <laughs> yeah, I think it was probably worth it in the end. I It would have probably have still been better to not give them the value and just, like, chill for a turn. But, you know... Okay. Hmm. Well. We're going to Containment Breach the finale. And attack with Bayou Groff here. That fifth land has not been interested in helping us out, has it? Probably going to cultivate and play Needlethorn Drake this next turn. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Yeah, so we're going to cultivate. Not like that, though, because I'm going to search up... Yeah, so we're going to go Cultivate. We do want our Mountain, because we don't have one yet. And then what do we want? I guess another Island. Yeah. So, that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> I screwed up again. What a surprise, right? What I wanted to do was get a Forest instead of an Island, so that I could play my Drake. Or a Swamp, so I could play my Flunk. But instead, I can't do either. I can play my Befuddler, so it's not a complete disaster, but it's not that far from a disaster either. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not helping my cause here. So I may as well flash in the Befuddler to prevent one damage here. Um, yeah, I think it's worth it. So we take five here. I think I do like it more than Kaldheim so far, but it is early. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't love that. Okay. Well, I think I just rumble with everything here. Um, I could flunk the blocker out of the way, but I think saving that is probably smarter. What if they have the one mana trick? That would be kind of bad for us. This time we're gonna play our Needlethorn Drake and our Biomathematician, I think. All right, that drops them to four. Yeah, so I think we play Biomathematician, Needlethorn Drake. Just imagine if they didn't have that 3-2. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> or if I'd left man up to play a more impactful card than our Befuddler. I mean, you know, I'm glad I left man up to play something at least when I screwed that up. If I hadn't, then I think it would have been a real disaster. Because with the Befuddler, we at least prevented a damage and then they traded um, for it. So it did a thing. You know, definitely did a thing. I'm kind of hoping they're really aggressive here and I can use Flunk to just kill their blocker. That's kind of my my goal here. I don't think that's what's going to happen, though. Uh, maybe it will. <laughs> okay, so we take three. All right, so we might be able to kill them here. Really depends on whether or not this flunk works or not. So if I kill the shield mage, I have to pay three life to do it. Um, to kill the pledge mage, I don't have to pay anything. But I think killing the shield mage is slightly better. Because... If I don't manage to kill them here... Um, it'll be easier for me to survive. Now, granted, the Silver Quill Pledge Mage may also gain flying. In which case, we're dead either way on their next turn, if we don't kill them here. I'm mostly hoping we can kill them here. So we are going to flunk. It's just a question of who's flunking. And I think the answer is... Let's go with the Pledge Mage. Okay. <laughs> I wish they didn't have two cards in their hand. Uh, that said, I think we're at high enough life uh, that we're just gonna swing out here. They'll need a little something else to finish us off. And... Okay. So they got a one, huh? So I think we play another Vortex Runner here because it can gain, um, unblockable next turn, and that might matter. All right, so do they have a trick to kill us here? I think that means they don't. Okay, we got there. Thank God we could learn, you know, we considered not taking that uh, lesson, but... The one that blows up artifacts and enchantments, but it ended up, and it already, that pretty much won us that game. So, thank you for the follow, Matu Mania. Without that, we would have lost to the value from the, uh, 
Enchantment. Right, this seems fine. We have all our colors. Um, yeah. I guess we didn't have black, actually, huh? So, let's play Needlethorn here. May just eat a removal spell, but, you know, we're okay with that. Pokemon of the Ages is a nice little card. Nice little card. Okay, so... I'm gonna attack with our Needle Thorn Drake here. Then the question is whether I want to play a Tap Land. I don't think we do. Yeah, nah. We're just gonna go ahead and play Biomathematician. Okay. I think I'm just going to attack with everything here. There's enough things that we can do to mess up their plans if they have like a trick or something that uh, I think I'm fine with that. So... I think I'm going to go ahead and use Arcane Subtraction here. See what they got. Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to go with Pest Summoning for now. Yeah. can actually... Oh, yeah, we can. After we play our land, we'll be able to use it. All right. That works out. Play our Campus. I think the archives are awesome. I think it makes the drafts even more um, uh, unique than they would otherwise be. So, you know, overall, I think they're good. There aren't that many of them that are bombs, honestly. Um, there's a few, but there really aren't that many that are bombs. Um, okay. Let's play my other biomathematician here and attack. Quintorius is going to do some silly stuff in the very near future is the problem with that plan. Um, namely, you know, they just move that from the graveyard, they get it back in their hand, they get a 3-2 token. So it does sort of feel like just bouncing Quintorius and making them have to recast this 5-mana thing is worth it. Yeah, let's do it. And this time we're going to get Introduction to Annihilation. Honestly, Time Warp isn't a bomb, believe it or not. <laughs> it's close, but it's not actually a bomb, like, in the traditional sense of what a bomb is. Not drawing a fifth land there is rough. That is rough. Um... So, we're just going to attack with our Drake and then play Dream Strix here. Yeah. Try to attack them in the air is the plan. Yeah, one thing this deck is really lacking is... Uh, the uh, fixing trick. The trick that lets you search up a land. That, that would be the lesson, that is. That would be really good. So yeah, they may just get that creature back here and make a 3-2, but that is a little slow. Interesting. So we continue to struggle on lands. We could field trip just for the land, but I think playing Biomathematician here is good enough that it's just what I'm going to do. So, you know, they're going to get a 3-2 out of returning that, but... There's nothing... It can only block. It can't do anything else. So, yeah. Yeah, 
yeah, these five five mana things are. Uh oh. Yeah, that's not good. There are definitely bomb instants and sorceries in this set. I'm in agreement, but time warp is not one of them. As good as it is, yeah, this lack of a fifth land is murdering us. Um. God, do I just need to field trip at this point? Yep, I would agree with, with those Dark Stargazer. Those are definitely bombs. Alright. I mean... I could just try to go wide, I guess. Ugh. Now we're just going to field trip, which sucks. But I think that's our plan. Then we'll grab, what, Pest Summoning, I guess? I guess I could have rummaged there instead, which wouldn't have been too bad, because I'm, I'm going to have to discard here, so... So yeah, Quintorius not being able to blow it up. Ooh, that's gross. Not being able to blow up Quintorius that one turn was brutal. Um, we're going to be too late, I think, but we'll see. So... The Befuddler's actually not bad. I'll discard this Vortex Runner. Yeah, I guess we're going to trade our Biomathematician. Eh, should we just take nine? Probably, yeah, we'll just take nine. But yeah, having to wait so long to cast this is going to be kind of a nightmare for us. Too little, too late. Yeah. So, you know, we can kill Quintorius, but... And that is what we're going to do, because he causes us all kinds of problems. But we still have to deal with that 5-2, which is going to kill us in two turns. Um, well, I guess if we kill Quintorius, it'll actually take three turns. So, yeah. Let's kill Quintorius here. So, yeah, we're not going to attack. But yeah, in short, I think the Mystical Archive is only good for the format. I don't think it's bad for it at all. That's true. I can kill the Flyer if I need to. Oof. Well... <laughs> We might be too late. Oh yeah, we're too late. <laughs> that was rough. Rough. Yeah, I should have rummaged on one of those turns. Because we needed a land more than we needed lessons. Alright, this is pretty good. I think we're going to lead with our Pledge Mage so that we can make it, you know, larger throughout the game. The only thing I could have done is decided to kill the Flyer instead on that turn, but 
I knew there was a chance the flyer would kill us, so... <laughs> Alright, so they're Quandrix. They're rocking to Cultivate, too, just like us. And they're also splashing red. Um, okay, so we're just going to attack for two here. And then... Yeah, I'll play a Biomathematician. Okay, um... Well... We attack with both of those. That much is clear. The question now, though, is whether I want to leave up divide by zero. I don't think so. I think we keep pressuring them. This deck could have used the Zamone pretty badly. So if they play a big creature or something, I do like that I can bounce it. Now if they cast something uh, like elemental, make two elemental tokens, that's gonna be a little more of a problem because divide by zero can't even bounce them. So, yeah. Yeah, you, blue green splashes red for some of the some of blue red's really powerful spells. That's what we're doing. Um, not to mention our Sonata thing. Fractal summoning. They want to cultivate again, huh? Yeah, that's not good. I didn't enjoy that. Um, I sort of feel like leaving up mana for divide by zero is better than bouncing Biblioplex Assistant. Yeah. Let's attack with both of those. So, I think I play Bayou Groff here and sacrifice uh, the, the token. And that lets me leave up Divide by Zero, which will hopefully freak them out a little bit. Hmm. I mean... We could also consider just playing both of these. So the thing about cultivating is I'll start being able to draw two cards a turn. And that's not awesome for us. All right, I think. Yeah, we're gonna play Biograph here, sacrifice the token. Which will very quickly become irrelevant. And then leave up mana for divide by zero. So the question is, do I want to cultivate this? Probably, I mean cultivate. Divide by zero that. Probably not. Probably not. So if nothing else, I will use it... Yeah, so they sort of played around it here. Um, 
but I think I'm okay with that. I think we'll divide by zero Zimone here. Yeah, so they're gonna draw a card. Um, we could blow that up with Containment Breach, but that doesn't really seem worth it to me. I think maybe having Introduction to Annihilation in our back pocket is best. Okay, so we tack them for seven here. Play a Vortex Runner. End our turn. Thank you for the follow, Yi Li, Matumania, and Kanjio Frank. Wouldn't mind our cultivate, because <laughs> that would make these two unblockable. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that was a lucky draw. <laughs> no way around that. Okay, so we're gonna cultivate. We're gonna grab a swamp. Yeah, and we already have a mountain. We have an island. I'm gonna rumble with all of them and then use arcane subtraction if they try to trade with the Groff. <laughs> yeah. That is the plan here. So, they're going to be at three. Kind of feels like a four four is probably better than a, than two one ones. All right. So they're going to need to kill. Well, they can actually gain life, so they can only they only have to kill one vortex runner, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I don't have any good blocks for our graph, at least. Um, yeah, so they're going to go to one here. I mean, they can double block the graph, but I think we'd be okay with that since they're going to one here. They can also block and learn if they wanted. Wow. Okay. Um, I mean, I think we let them keep the wall. So they go to one here. They lose both of those. Now that pest summoning is looking better, huh? Okay, I'll play our replay of Vortex Runner. I think going wider is better here overall. So just in case they do something crazy. So I'd rather do this than elemental summoning. They know both the cards in our hand, which, you know, kind of sucks. Oh, ho, ho, they got them both. 
that's that's not great. Uh, <laughs> I think our introduction to Annihilation probably will still get us there this turn. Um, I guess it won't get us there because they'll go to one. Dang. And they put Explosive Welcome back on top. <laughs> oh my god. They may find their way out of this. Well, that, that helps a lot, actually. Um, okay, so let's attack with our 1-1 one, one here. I'm sure they just block it with their Overgrown Arch, but it's a free attack, more or less, so... You know. Alright, so let's cast our Masterpiece here. So they can only kill one of these with explosive whatever. Um, yeah, you're an instant, aren't you? That's frustrating. Um, okay. I think everybody rumbles here. I could have introduction to Annihilation, but it wouldn't get me there. So it doesn't really seem worth it to give them the card right now. Especially because in my second main phase, I can play both of these. They can now actually kill both of them, but I think that is okay with us. Yeah, so... I think we're still going to be able to overcome their nonsense here. But they're definitely making it harder than it needs to be. <laughs> what do they wish for? Introduction to prophecy, okay. So now it does get us there. So overall, um, you know, I don't think this deck is great, but I think this deck is doing a good job of showing you how powerful learning is because you know, I'd say the av the quality of our cards in our deck on average isn't great, but we have all of these learn and lessons, and those have played a big role in getting us there. Drawing Cultivate at the right exact time in that game played a major role, too. So, I think we can keep this on the draw. We need one land to play everything, so... Yeah. I call me Zampa. Yeah, your deck was pretty sweet too. You almost stabilized there despite the situation being um, catastrophic for you. <laughs> we drew Cultivate at the exact right time in our game too, so on our side. Nice. Okay, so... I guess we'll lead. Do I want to lead with Amplomancer or Needlethorn more? I mean, Needlethorn has more usefulness late, so I think I'll go ahead and play Amplomancer here. Ooh. That's less than awesome. Okay. So, I can use my Befuddler here to mess combat up on them. So, I think I'm probably going to attack. And if they block, play the Befuddler. If they don't block, play... I don't know. Pledge Mage, maybe? Good chance they block, I think. But 
I could be wrong. Block it. <laughs> no, yeah. They don't, though. Uh... Yeah, let's play Pledge Mage. I mean, Vortex Runner is definitely a better blocker, but... Pledge Mage will put them under more pressure. Oh. So we need to wish for our Enchantment Destruction spell again. <laughs> Surprisingly, we don't have any learn in our hand right now, which is kind of crazy. Um, but that is the, that is the case. Um, all right, so let's play. Yeah, I'll play Needlethorn Drake and leave up the other stuff. Befuddler and Flunk. We need to find a learn card, please. Like, honestly... Three and three, I feel like, is overperforming a little bit for this deck, but maybe I'm underestimating lessons a little bit. All right, so we're just gonna take we're just gonna take four. Yeah, casting it on curve <laughs> when you're not Silver Quill is pretty disgusting. Okay, so it may be worth flunking that thing. Even though they get a flyer, I think it probably is. It can run away with the game if you're not careful. So, yeah. We're going to go ahead and flunk the Researcher. Also, it gives us a pretty nice... Uh, uh, not that nice of an attack on the backswing, actually. Um, but it does give us one. So, we're going to Cultivate here, grab our Mountain, and... I think an Island, so we can play our Befuddler. Yeah. So we put this one onto the battlefield. We put this one into our hand. And yeah, I think we attack with our Pledge Mage. I need to do some learning to get rid of that dramatic finale or it's gonna beat us. It's kind of what it does. You know, beats people. Okay, so I think I'm going to block the pest and use my Befuddler. So, see what our opponent does here. Alright. Yeah. See you later, Befuddler. Befuddler's fine. It's not great. Um, it's done some. It's done some pretty real work in this deck, actually. Uh, but it's not. It's not anything special. Yeah, Fairy Duelist is probably the best one we've seen like that. Um, it was pretty insane. So, I can attack with my Amplomancer here. I can actually get away with attacking with the Pledge Mage here, too. I think they double block and get a token, but I think I can live with that. No, no, I can't. Just kidding. So... Hmm. Maybe it is better for them to double block and get a token. Yeah, let's attack with just the Pledge Mage. Amplomancer, if they block it, I have to spend like a million mana to keep it alive. And in this case, the double block just results in their creatures dying. Uh-oh. I think they have the one green mana trick. Well, maybe they don't. They just wanted a token, which I think probably makes some sense. Um, so let's play a Vortex Runner. And another Pledge Mage. Man, it's rough. You know, we've had a good... We've had a very easy time... Um, finding our learn and lesson stuff so far. But I don't think it's going to happen here. So I have to block and kill one of these 
Inklings. And I'm still dead next turn. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we lose. It's hard to beat Dramatic Finale when you don't get, um, you know, your, your lesson to search up a way to blow it up. Well, like I said, I feel like 3 and 3 was actually overachieving for that deck a little bit. Because I don't think it was a great deck. Um, I think it was fine. All the learning really helped out there. But yeah, it didn't. It, it wasn't great. So I'll take a 3 and 3. It's also nice that it didn't take, you know, three hours like our only draft yesterday. So we're actually going to get to draft twice today. 